good evening ladies and gentlemen once again a warm welcome to one and all of you today's session is on stress and mental health and it will be is taken by dr aditya so just a few words on dr aditya dr aditya hande has completed his degree in naturopathy and yoga from rajiv gandhi university of health sciences karnataka bangalore he has worked in stm hospital of yoga and naturopathy and shatayu ayurveda and yoga retreat center he has conducted many corporate yoga classes customized yoga therapy sessions and also yoga show in the news channels he has worked as a junior research fellow in yesvyasa university bangalore he is an expert in acupuncture hydrotherapy nutrition and manipulative therapy he has won many yoga competitions and also was a lead trainer in the guinness world record event conducted for the largest yoga class in karnataka state in 2013 now he is with us in nishka healthcare hsr layout bangalore as naturopathy and yoga consultant welcome doctor to the session over to you yeah thank you jo dr jobi for that wonderful uh, introduction so today we will be talking more on uh, mental health today we'll be talking on the importance of yoga as such on naturopathy as such on uh, mental health because we believe that it is not just body happens to be uh, you know in a diseased matter or in a diseased state there are many reasons so as we go by we'll try to understand the reasons for the same and we'll try to uh, look at the other possibilities in how the body and how the mind actually works in the environment such as uh, today's uh, lockdown situations and uh, today's way of competitiveness so what is mental health so basically anything which is psychologically and absence of any kind of a mental illness is what we call as mental health the reason why we have to think about psychological prospect is because of psychology or because of the mind and how it works you know uh, it has some of the potential effects on the body as such so psychological resilience is what we call as an interaction between the activities of the mind and the activities of the body where we actually even talk about life as such so the activity is the reason why we are heading towards some of the life the way it works uh, the functions of this life and try to understand the meaning of the life as such so once we try to understand this body mind and itself then slowly we can understand what the health or what the uh, mental health is all about so what happens when something happens to you is you can feel these kind of uh, developments like you start feeling sad to some issues you uh, your concentration reduces when you are more focused on to other issues there is a lot of confusion which builds up in your mind and there is extreme mood changes when this happens and also because of which you have fears you have anxiety you have worries and you tend to withdraw from these activities because you are focused on to something else at the same time you have delusions which is a more uh, increased amount of psychological pressure to your mind as such so also what are the chances for you to get this mental disorders is most of a stressful situation you know monday morning 9 o'clock when you get up to work that in itself makes you feel that you are reduced one of your sundays so instead of looking at the sunday which is coming the next week we always start brooding about the sunday which is always lost so we like to enjoy ourselves in the comfort of not being interrupted our flow of thoughts or our flow of activity as such so this leads to stress so these kind of stresses on a repeated uh, factor will aggravate your way of thinking pattern will aggravate the level the body and its psychological impact that is chemical in nature will impact your system that can lead to brain damages that can lead to some of the experiences which you go through like ptsd which is commonly seen in post war or during the war situation post traumatic stressful disorders where the army battalion tries to feel very much insecure on their combat abilities later we tend to get on to with this with alcohols and recreational drugs to overcome this we'll be talking about it a few moments later and we have a history of abuse like that of alcohol and other the causes can be environmental exposure it can be brain chemical matter it can also be inherited traits of the body as such so 
when we look at this uh, what exactly is the physical aspect of the body and what exactly is the psychological aspect of the body there are two things if you can see the chart so from the signs of distress uh, what it happens is slowly the body withdraws itself to get into shutting down moment where you try to isolate yourself and the growth suddenly stops to decrease because of some of the chemical nature of the body so this can lead to uh, extreme distresses so from optimum functioning slowly it can take into either right or the left side and you try to understand what is the reason why why you are having this problem so that is the reason why we say optimal functioning of the body is more important the same uh, window of uh, rainbow we will be talking in a bit more later in the form of yoga how yoga thinks about these things and what is exactly cause of it uh, what happens when the stresses are affecting your body is something which we call as psychosomatic diseases so when there are a lot of psychosomatic ailments today as we see like that of hypertension that of asthma that of stresses which induces other body problems so stress is actually a good part of the body uh, let's say stress actually makes you work better it makes you more efficient they feel more able to uh, in a competitive spirit it gives you a boost of cortisol that will make sure that your body reacts well and you reach to your uh, let's say the goal will be achieved faster but every time you keep up the same phase of stress in a longer duration that leads to a bad implication so here i am trying to shorten up what exactly is a short term stress and long term stress and short term stress you can always see that your mind is more focused on to the things which you prioritize accordingly on a longer term this prioritization is what leads to more headache more migraine and other different kinds of diseases or disorders in your mind which will probably even be a cause for let's say parkinsons and alzheimers they are one of the causes why overthinking or underthinking or too much of stress can also lead in some of the problems in your mind your heart rate increases just to say to it that the oxygenation happens across the body completely and that can lead to serious heart problems on a longer duration where we have something called as arrhythmias breathing problem can also take place because in a short term if it is a competition of a 100 meter dash you need oxygen so that body works efficiently but on a longer problems or on a longer duration of these oxygenation your tidal volume as such though increases but your lungs face a lot of shortfalls so your breathing capacity changes and because of which lot of internal stimulus and internal way of handling the body chemicals hampers also your digestion gets hampered uh, though good for a short term on a longer term you have irritable bowel syndrome your uh, so called sexual activity also reduces which is a very uh, symptom for uh, psychological ailments as such your muscles become sore you tend to feel more lethargic there is something called as chronic fatigue syndrome which happens on a long term of a psychological or a psychosomatic ailments as such so based on these things what we can come to telling is there is something which is actually uh, giving you information about what exactly body is doing and what exactly it should not do based on that we have something called as neurotransmitters so these are the chemical bound compounds which are actually communicating with around your organs around your other joints and everything to take control of though they are not under our control but yes some of them there are probably uh, more than 100 different types of uh, neurotransmitters but we are focusing on these neurotransmitters as such because this is more impactful on your mind as such so there are two types probably three types uh, one is excitatory which means that they give more uh, stimulative responses inhibitory which reduces the stimulations and accordingly they have functions so you can see alzheimer disease is one of the reason why you have a problem in deficit of acetylcholine similarly you can see uh, insomnia which is a very common disease if you are not getting sleep that means that the gaba that is uh, gamma amino butyric acid is less in your body similarly there are many things which these neurotransmitters can actually hold a lot of things some of them are natural which you can get it through food some of them which are already present in your body so only the reason is how well they function on your system and what it uh, makes a big difference and impact in your system as such so as a naturopathic perspective or as a yogic perspective what exactly are we talking about or uh, how does yoga naturopathy fits into mental health uh, we have something which the world health organization defines as health health is not just an abstinence of or absence of a disease 
its complete physical, mental, social, spiritual, and psychological well-being as such. So spiritual is also included in WHO's definition, the latest definition as such. The same thing is what we see in Panchakosha theory. Panchakosha, as the name suggests, Pancha is five, Kosha is the layers. So Panchakosha is basically the five layers of a human existence. So it starts from Annamaya. As you can see, the Anna is called as food. So anything which is physical in nature transforms to Annamaya Kosha. If that is good, then that can work if there is a Pranamaya Kosha. Like I said in the previous uh, lecture or previous talk about Pranayama, how breath can be more influential in making your system more susceptible to its existence. Uh, Pranamaya Kosha, if it is well enough, it can lead to a lot of goodness in the system. So similarly, Manomaya Kosha, when there is body, when there is breath, then obviously the mind gets involved in seeing to it that it has a very good functioning. So there is one physical aspect of body, which is, let's say, food. Another physical aspect of the body, which is my, uh, which is prana. And the, the combination of these two to have in a better way is the reason why we have Manomaya. It is like engine oil in a me mechanics of the uh, car. But for this Manomaya Kosha to function, to exist in putting that into forward momentum, we need something called as Jnana. Jnana is nothing but uh, the intellect or the knowledge behind functioning of these three elements together. When this comes into existence, slowly there is a movement which is in a very progressive state. That is what we call as Anandamaya Kosha. So Anandamaya is the entire way of driving a car in a free highway. But for that, you need to have Vijnanamaya, understanding the use of clutch, brake, accelerator and the knowledge of the road signs and symbols same time manomaya to make sure that everything is available that is petrol oil and other things pranamaya is a seat of it to make sure that the driving skills or the steering wheel as such is there to make that into transformation annamaya is the car itself so basically the entire body has to work so that you can enjoy the car is the reason why we have to bring down to such called as panchakosha theory also, they talk about Purusharthas or the way the body should work or the way the human being should work. It is given in four different kinds. That is Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Dharma being doing things that way it should be done. It is not that whether it is right or wrong, but ultimately it is getting things done. Artha is the reasoning behind it. Kama is not just the sexuality behind it. It's also the, uh, the importance of emotions being played in the reason why you do it. See, if any court cases as such, it's the only how the case has been debated upon gets to win the case. So it's like how well you put your intellect into getting things done, how well you have made sure that you get the cases done well is the reason why you get a very good case. When that happens, then you get into something called as moksha, that is nothing but anandamaya kosha, that is you are happy to make sure that all these three things are working together. Similarly, when it has to be done, so we talked about what is it and we have talked about how it is and now we are talking when it is. So when is basically again Chatur Ashrama, Ashrama being the stages of life. So we have Brahmacharya where you are trying to grab knowledge as much as possible, which is less than 27 years of age. Grihastha when you are trying to put that into uh, your experiential mode or where you are learned and then you are putting into experiential way. So it is 27 to 54. Then Vanaprastha, when you are trying to put these two experience and knowledge for the purpose of people around you, where they try to understand your knowledge and then they try to overwhelmingly use those knowledge for their benefit. And then Sanyasa, where you have no bond of any kind of these things with the society as such. I mean, yes, it is too vague for me to tell in this point, but the yoga has a perspective of understanding what is the reason why we are supposed to do it in a certain way. So we will come back to and that understanding as well. Then it says why the diseases should come to your body or what can be wrong because of this disease. So it again talks about Pancha Kleshas as Patanjali, the person who has orated about this yoga as such, talked about these five elements because of which you can get into troubles. First and foremost is Avidya, which talks about uh, ignorance of an object or ignorance in any subject. So we try to be masters in our subject, but if you give something else, we try to come up with answer, but getting that not knowing and try to recollect it more gives the problem to the body. That is the reason why ignorance is the first path of learning rather than stepping back. 
Then we have asmita, which is egoism. Not in the bad sense, but egoism is the reason why you actually try to get things done the way you want it. So if I give you a screwdriver, you basically, you have to tighten some screws or nuts in your body or in your vicinity as such. Similarly, asmita gives you an identity to use the tools. Raga is nothing but attachments. As I said, emotions and attachments are required to fulfill our way of doing things. But if it goes to an extent where it can hamper things, then you have some psychological disturbances. And that is the reason why uh, Raga, as such, is said as one of the kleshas or one of the disease factors. Then Dvesha is, as the English literary uh, transliteration goes by, is aversion or hatred. Too much of an emotional instability leads to aversion. If you are, if I'm feeding you your, even your favorite food, let's say one of the sweets or one of the food particle, if I give you in a regular interval throughout the day, you start getting hatred towards that. You start getting averted towards that. That is the reason why too much of anything leads to dvesha and slowly it leads to abhinivesha. Abhinivesha is the fear. Then this can put a huge impact in your body. This can put a huge impact on your mind. So this is the reason why the mind also becomes a very important aspect because mind, as you see, is just one entity. But yoga differentiates between four different uh, practices, although, or four different factors or four different places or four different sections. Buddhi being the intellect, where the seed of intelligence works. Ahankara, as I said before, is egoism, the way you use this as an identity to use your knowledge. Manas is the memories and how you are supposed to use this. So once you have already taught the first standard, you slowly raise up to the 10th grade, 12th grade, finish off your college, and then you don't go back to use those words again. So what you have knowledge, you put it into perspective and get it done. That leads to Chitta again, which is there is nothing. You just use your conscious way of doing things and where there's unconscious bound, which is pushing this to happen. This is what happens even in scientific community when we see there, there is a lot of mind-body relation. So these things we basically be how yoga defines itself. But when the science, modern science talks about is the gut feeling. You must have, these are the recent thing which has come into the existence. Gut feeling is not just in saying of an English colonial language, but gut feeling is also because uh, there are certain bacteria which can affect your mood. We believe that if you eat a lot of curds, it tends to make you more drowsy. It tends to make you more lethargic. So similarly, there are a lot of other foods because of which your mind can lose its focus, it can lose its foundation of being things or getting things together. Then the food factors, as I said, food is a very important part. As uh, Anshurbadi and Ayurveda also, yoga defines food based on different kinds of its taste, if its smell and its features. So the food also can have a large implication on your body and also social norms. So basically, all these things are one of the reasons for your betterment of your mental health. So I tried to explain an entirety of yoga. This is not, I mean, this cannot be the ultimate source of yoga or ultimate understanding of yoga. But definitely, these are the practical ways in which you can get through your mental health without much of a technical support. So there are obviously problems in the mind. So let me tell you a story of how things happen. Uh, there is a story which is, it can be seen in our hippie movement during the 1990s when um, people used to take up cannabis or marijuana and feel a lighted head. So there was a research which went on to look at what exactly happens in these people who, who themselves call them as hipsters and people who are meditative. Because both of them show that they have actually left the world, they have left the relationship between the people, they just want to keep with them isolated without much of a thing. So they found out that if you are inhaling marijuana, if you are inhaling cannabis, uh, there are certain receptors in the brain which uh, are prone towards uh, getting this uh, marijuana kick. So basically what happens is if you meditate the same time or on the other hand, if you even take marijuana, you have a same kind of an ambience created in your brain. So that receptor was not known before. And that is the reason why they said it as Ananda Mind. So like that, they came up with many other neurotransmitter receptors, which kept on to gluing what exactly is it available in the body and how it transpires itself into the system. So what happens is if you try to look at in the perspective of what exactly is a chemical reaction which is happening in your system, body is generating thoughts and emotions against itself. 
so you think of something that is actually hampering your own self because if you say i have a problem with the person who is with me i have a problem with the person who is around me and basically you are the one who is actually creating some of the uh, chemical reactions in your body even if you ignore it it sometimes be more kind of a problematic for your situation as such so they are actually generated by your own body it's self created and you think that this is the right way of getting into it for example let's take an example of uh, being anger when you are more angry you know uh, thoughts tend to be more towards directed towards one person you know uh, anger comes because one of your person or one of your person who you love is not listening to you so once that happens the anger rush comes in and you tend to take steps in a very drastic way because of which though the person has done good though the person has done bad you only focus on to that situations which leads or which infuses this anger as such then what happens is you try to build up a environment of debate or argument around that person that can lead to a distress in your system and that can hamper your thoughts and emotions at the same time this can also be seen in all our day to day activity basically we have a competition with the society we have a competition with people around us you know uh, when we were yeah, very young our parents used to say get the first rank in the college get the first rank in the school get the first rank in the class so we are always pushed in a competitive spirit so if you keep on pushing this in a competitive spirit that puts us in a very stressful situation yes all of us have been made for that kind of a factor but nobody has said what after the competition because once we are put more into stress in the system Uh, that burden cannot be handled by many of the people today in india every uh, one in every six person has some kind of a mental problem it's because of this parental issues also at the same time it's also because of many of the other issues like peers and friends friends who are getting good marks you feel kind of left out so that also creates more of a uh, problem in your body as such yoga interestingly says that if you are anger on any issue see to it that you can be in the state of anger for a longer time so that you can achieve things which you can't generally do it the problem is we get anger for a moment and then we change that anger into something called as irritability once that happens that irritability is what is leading to most of our problems so yoga specifically says that if you are anger see to it that you can do it in the same way for a longer time the best person who talks about anger and enlightenment is one of the sages in india vishwamitra so vishwamitra was very angry and he could get things done more faster but that uses lot of body energy that consumes lot of body's functions at physiological levels and psychological levels that is the reason why we become more irritated rather than functioning in our better way so treatment or management uh well prevention is obviously better than cure if you are not following any of the yogic way of living but what can we do so either you choose naturopathy yoga or any other alternative medicine they have their own way of handling uh, the body the mind and it's it so yoga talks more about meditation yoga talks more about relaxation yoga talks about its diet yoga talks about contemplation and many things but if you see both of them have very similar in, in itself so naturopathy talks about music therapy so it is widely accepted that when you are very happy you enjoy the tune but when you are very sad you enjoy the lyrics so similarly music therapy is something which can suit your mind it can suit your way of thinking and conscious so many of the music especially in mozart k488 which i have been doing research on it shows that it enhances your uh, so called uh, concentration and it makes sure that you can be glued to that kind of a focus for a longer duration than without the music as such so walking on the grass is also one such way where you can actually re- relax your body because of something which we believe in uh, the grounding nature of the body with obviously with your bare foot because a lot of uh, radicals which are moving in where the skin is getting conducted directly to the ground so that reduces the stress and re- increases your immune system once that happens then the muscle tension also reduces and that will also reduce the free radicals because if the muscles is more tense it leads to lactic acid build up that also goes down if you are just bare foot walking on the grass keep yourself hydrated no matter what no matter how you might not feel thirsty but hydration is very important thing because 24 hours of the day probably all the other organs can be hampered or it can take up its own time to get back into normal but your brain is not going to do that 
you need brain a very important uh, it's an, a very important organ because it keeps on functioning for a longer duration of the time and also socialization well very wrong time to talk about socialization though but always you can pick up to our videos you can also pick up to people around you you can also talk to the relatives which we are uh, talking for a long time you can also come to people who are actually you know friends who have lost contact in the past, past few days so don't take anything in a negative situation as such try to overbuild with some new kind of a technique the best way to see to it that you don't get into alzheimer's you don't get into parkinson there are many research studies which says that you can actually do something like learning a new skill when we say learning a new skill you can start uh, doing painting you can start doing uh, poetry you can start doing new skills of instruments so flute keyboard guitar anything if you could do it in a very early age then slowly that will transform creating a new uh, pathway for your nerves to build and that helps in regeneration of uh, your brain cells or nerve cells which we call as neuroplasticity so based on these things <clears throat> you can see that meditation has lot of things so first enjoy yourself whatever happens rather than managing it try to overcome it enjoy the way you have been doing things organize your skills eat lot of food which are balanced in nature don't hop on to junk food plan your leisure activity which is very important in a very 5 minutes of a complete setting in front of a computer see to it that you get up and do some physical activity exercise is a very important aspect in mental health because exercise keeps you more focused it makes you feel more uh, let's say tensed down at the same time breathing techniques and positive thoughts can also make sure that you can do your things better so yes these are the few things which we are actually looking for uh, we are open for questions any questions you can always drop down to the chat box and also you can uh, unmute yourself and talk to us more important in any of our way of dealing with mental illness is you see to it that you uh, talk to any of your people first socialization if it becomes on a greater scale obviously you feel better so you don't feel that locked down though you are physically you are mentally you need not be locked down so you can either start creating new skills for yourself either you can start creating new things for yourself start learning a new skills start doing new uh, way of doing work same time socialization will also help us so you can always visit us at the uh, website we'll be having all these things available you can also consult us at the same time you can be tuned in for more of our programs and also this coming saturday we have dr jobi talking on infertility and in coming weeks we'll be having more of a treatment package we'll be focusing on to your needs and your necessities today we are just doing so that we can understand what exactly you are going through but yes we can always uh, talk about our packages okay we can always talk about what you need and we can get that things done in naturopathy yoga and ayurveda yes any questions thank you doctor it was a really wonderful session uh, i would just like to add uh, for our listeners that sleep also matters please do sleep regularly with at least 7 to 8 hours of a rest in the night sleep early and get up early because that calms down the mind and uh, makes a brain functions ready for another new day thank you ladies and gentlemen you can always put your questions in the chat box or you can unmute, unmute yourself and you can ask questions doctor if you can just uh, talk about you know a, a little uh, yoga and uh, naturopathy treatments that we do for uh, stress yeah i mean there are a lot of treatments and in, uh, in naturopathy and in yoga as such as i said uh, music therapy is one such uh, there are a lot of musics which are available online for your i mean a lot of musics which are which you can use for uh, your mental health as such and also you can do meditation there are a lot of meditation according to, if you are anxious you have a meditation to cool you down if you are feeling light or kind of low you can do some of the stimulative meditations also so 
you cannot uh, segregate one kind of a treatment but yes based on your feeling we have treatment naturopathy more significantly talks on building up socialization so you go out you talk to people there is something called as sunlight therapy or heliotherapy where you take positively majority of the sun to make sure that you are feel more good there are based on your hydration as i said water is very important for your body to so drink well water sleep well at the same time but also you have to plan your and prioritize your work that is also more important as a personal thing uh, you should not let your body make sure that it hampers its physicality as such when i say physicality is there has to be a routine which has to be followed at the same time there has to be slight changes in your routine so if you keep on doing the same routine anything which comes and bumps into it you feel little lost that is the reason why i say to it that there is always some kind of an addition and subtraction that is the reason why i said more about enhancing your skill sunday need not be a lazy day it can be some day of a skill enhancing also so you see to it that you bring more effective treatment as such and also you see to it that you bring more skills and understanding for your self as such so what happens is once you are getting interested in these activities slowly your body will function better and you will stop losing focus on your day to day activities so more important is see to it that you have a particular way of doing things At the same time you enhance your skill it's not just short time but also in a long time you will not have problem with alzheimers you will not have problem with parkinson that is the reason why we focus more on something like sudoku word building and all those things these are nothing but helping your neuroplasticity so helping more nerve building which happens so that is the reason why we ask you to come up with us if you have any doubts if you have if you feel low you can also talk to me because we all are in the same uh, way of uh, handling things so you can always talk to us we will make sure that we are more specific in what kind of things you can do so if you are more focused on what you are supposed to do that will be easier for us to take care of you and at the same time you take care of yourself so with this i think uh, since there's no question uh, uh if anybody have we can actually drop the questions but yes these are the few things how you can make sure that you can uh, be stress free yeah anything else talk to you doctor yeah. yeah so uh, thing is we cannot look at a person and say that he is stressed or depressed yeah but yes seeing to his emotions and sudden changes of uh, behaving so if you know anybody or in your family in your neighborhood uh, you can uh, you know suggest them and uh, maybe you can talk to them because talking and listening helps to reduce stress also and please you can recommend them there are a lot of ayurvedic treatments also so thank you very much for the patient listening hope to see you again in future for our next sessions thank you once again thank you ladies and gentlemen thank you we'll end the session here thank you